Okay, so I've been working on a project that requires me to work with op amps. And if anybody's worked with op amps, you know that you really need a split supply. So you need, you need one supply that can do dual output or two individual supplies you can hook up in, you know, plus to minus and use the other two as your split. Um, that's fine for on the bench, but what are you going to do when you need to implement it into a project and you let's say you want to put this in your car uh, when you only have one supply which is 12 volts you're going to need to build a DC to DC converter or a power supply of some sort that's going to create this positive and negative rail voltage and there are some solutions out there and you can buy a whole board and uh, it's you know it might be big and it's just not going to integrate into your project very easily but I come across a pretty cool device and I'm going to show you that actually does do this. It doesn't put out a lot of power, maybe 100 milliamps supplying it, but if you're just using it for op amps and, you know, and you're not using it for anything, you know, high powered, um, this is a pretty cool solution. I'm going to show you what it is right now. It almost looks like a relay. It's that small. It is one of these. And this is a DC to DC converter in that little box, in that little tiny relay box. You know, it's just, it's amazing how, how, how they can make this stuff. Um, I'm going to put it under the microscope here and you're going to see how small this thing really is. Now this is a 5 volt input and 5 volt plus and minus output. So you put your negative five volts, uh, you, you have grounded, you know, your negative of your five volts here, your positive of your five volts here, and this is your common, and this is your minus um, plus five volts. I could be wrong, we'll have to look at the data sheet on that. And they sell these in all sorts of different voltages that you can, so you can have 12 volts in, you can have 24 volts in, you can have five volts out, nine volts out, it doesn't, I think this is, there's a whole bunch of them, so we're going to look at the data sheet right now. And let's see. This is made by Recom, a DC to DC converter. Low cost, one watt converter, power supply sharing on dual output version, industry standard pinout, blah, 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 blah. So it's, I mean, it's 85% efficient. It's not bad, I mean, considering what you're doing with it. And these are all the ranges right here. Uh, let's see, I think we have uh, this one. Maybe, I think it's this one. But, yeah, it's not bad. It, <clears throat> if you're going to be just, you know, doing some op amps, if, you know, some project with op amps, this seems like it would be a decent solution. Yeah, and I mean, it's unregulated, which is fine. I mean, I'm sure you could probably, you know, design a back-end uh, regulated circuit for this. You know, just hook, let's go down to the pinout. Right here. So, pin 1 is V in, pin 2 is negative V in on your single supply. And on your output, this, if you have a single, this is what your pinout would be. Uh, pin five would be your your negative V in, out. And, well, your yeah, your negative V out, and pin six would be your positive V out. And if you had the dual version, like I have, then the middle is the common pin five, and you have negative V out is four, and positive V out is six. That is just great. Uh, so. If you need to build something small and in a little box, and you don't, no more, you know, build, you know, building these huge power supplies to run these small op amp circuits. These would be great for, you know, doing something if you were trying to build like a portable um, audio preamp or a headphone amplifier, and you required a dual split supply. I mean, you can use a single supply, but, you know, why bother? I mean, you can if if you can do it like this, pretty cheap. I think these devices are around six dollars a piece, uh, not including shipping. So I mean, it's if you buy a bunch of these, it probably save you some money. So let's go over to 
if, let's try and power an op amp with this and see what kind of results we get. But before we go that route, let's see what kind of voltages we get out of this thing. It says it's five volts out, but it's unregulated. So let's plug this into the circuit, a circuit board that I have, uh, a, a breadboard that is, we're going to see if we can uh, achieve this. All right, <clears throat> so I probably want to put this on the microscope. So I'm just going to plug this into the board. I've already made the circuit up here. Just like that. And let's go to the test equipment cam. I am just going to probe with my meter the uh, output of this. As you can see, the input of it is drawing about 30 milliamps. That's not bad considering it's what it's doing. So let's check the positive side of the supply. We're getting 5.6 volts out. And the other side? And minus 5.6 so it's pretty pretty good um, if you want to put some regulators on at the end of this I'd probably consider maybe getting a, a, a 9 volt so you have a little bit of headroom but since I'm just kind of farting around with this I'm just gonna be using the regular unregulated 5 volt for my op amp so that gives us about a 10 volt peak to peak roughly um, with this op amp we might not be able to achieve that because the rails sometimes you can't get close to rail with some kind of uh, some of these op amps so let's take a look at the op amp data sheet here and this is what we're going to be using i i use these op amps all the time in audio circuits and um i pulled a lot of these out of some MTX amplifiers they they are they littered in the preamp and equalizer section in in the uh, old 90s MTX amplifiers and they're really good op amps they're low noise operational amplifiers they're you know here's the applications here it's just it's all good for audio now if you never worked with op amps <clears throat> excuse me i would uh let's go to the other camera here for a second if you've never worked with op amps I really suggest you either pick up or download this book I'm gonna put a link in the description it's the Forrest Mims engineering mini notebook for op amps and ICs I've had this book probably since I was eight years old nine or ten I don't know somewhere and I can't even remember it was so long ago um, this is a very great book for learning how to set up op amps and use op amps and how how, how they work um, I'm going to show you the, uh, let's see here, you can download it and it looks like this. Uh, you can download the actual file from this website, I believe if you sign in, uh, it's free. So um, it's very, very good information in here on how to use op amps and how they work and in the beginning of the book. They have some schematic diagram symbols, and is it, they go into the split uh, split supply operation, powering the op amps, and basically this is what we are. Um, this is basically what we're replacing. Uh, let's see. Now let's go find the non-inverting amplifier. This is one of the most simplest things we can build here. I believe it's page 13. Okay. Right here. The non-inverting amplifier. So, we're going to use this example exactly. We're going to put, you know, example, if R1 is 1,000 ohms and R2 is 10,000 ohms, then the gain is 1 plus 10,000 divided by 1,000 or 11. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna build this circuit here. Well, I've already built this circuit here, so let's take a look at it on the 
microscope and that I see. And as you can see, I have the 10K here and the 1K here. And these are 5% resistors, so we're gonna get a little bit of error. And as you can see, this breadboard is probably as old as me, and it has a lot of corrosion, and there's probably some resistance in these sockets. So we're not gonna get exact measurements from the calculations that we're going to be doing but it's pretty cool we're just basically trying to test this out this power supply this little dc to dc converter uh, just to see how how it works and how well it will work with an op amp unregulated i'm going to uh i believe i have the rails already hooked up let's go to the scope here I'm going to put, right now I have this, my scope lead on the input, what we're feeding the actual op amp. All right, so let's get this out of the way. What I'm feeding the op amp is about 800 millivolts. And on here it says about 740, a little discrepancy there. So if I move this to the output we should get a gain now let's see if we can calculate that gain we already said that in the book on page 13 I believe that was 13 page 13 that we're gonna get a gain of 11 uh, come on focus that if we use a 10K and a 1K, we should get a gain of 11. So, go back to the desktop here, and we try and, whoops, didn't mean to do that, clear this out. If we take 0.7, 4 o volts peak to peak which is basically what I'm supplying my op amp input with and multiplying it by that gain factor which is 11 I should get 8.14 volts and that's I think that was a result you guys saw before I started here I'm just trying to show you how it got there so we should have roughly about 8.14 volts you know minus the error we're gonna have a resistance in components that we're using here so let's uh, see what we get on the output let's go back to the test camera okay uh, I don't think you can see the numbers down on the bottom there but I'm just gonna move this pin over from the input of the op amp to the output and wow there we go I'm getting about 8.3 volts output of that. So that's pretty close to our calculation. And we have a beautiful sine wave. There's no noise in there and I haven't even put in any capacitors in this circuit at all. And we're drawing about 30 milliamps. So it seems about 10 more milliamps than what we when we started. So that's a pretty cool neat little device. I kind of like that. That that is going to make some open up some doors to newer um, let's go back here to the that's gonna open up some doors to some new projects that you know that you might want to be able to have a split supply in and it's not always easy to build or integrate into the circuit I mean for six seven bucks I mean if you get if your uh, circuit is under a hundred milliamps and I think there are different versions of this I think there may be bigger ones smaller ones so um, they're very good. I just thought I would point that out because I don't think many people know that these exist, you know, and that's, you know, I, I just recently found out, found out about them myself because I had a project and I was searching for a supply and I could not find one and then I just went to a few different, um, you know, part houses and searched on their website for DC to DC converters and then I, I, I stumbled across these and I was like, oh wow, that's cool. And I ordered them up and I didn't have very high hopes for it, but I do now. They work pretty well. I haven't really 
beat them up very much but everything that I've tested with this on the bench seemed that they were pretty pretty good um, I haven't pushed them to the full hundred milliamp capability but I'm sure that you know if they rated in the uh, specification sheet then I'm sure that they'll do it uh, I can't see any issues with noise or you know because sometimes DC to DC converters can be very very noisy um, I didn't see any noise in my oscilloscope but then again I haven't really ran any audio through it and, and build it built my final circuit yet so that's to be determined but as of right now these are pretty cool devices so I just thought I would mention that and show you basically how a simple negative feedback operational amplifier works and, you know it was very very short burst there but um, yeah that's pretty cool so hope you enjoyed this video and have a good night we'll see you in the next video